All right, now we're gonna dive a little more hardcore into kinematics here. So there's one big division here I want you to totally realize. When you have acceleration, constant acceleration, or when you have no acceleration. If your acceleration is zero, this is really the only equation you have dealing with your displacement. Your displacement equals velocity times time. This is simply nothing more than a rearrangement of your definition of velocity. So, but if you've got no acceleration, immediately you should think this is where you need to go in dealing with kinematics calculations. So, however, if you've got constant acceleration, then this is where you're gonna need to head instead. So, dealing with constant acceleration is a little more of a pain in the butt. Now, if you're dealing with non-constant acceleration, you're probably not dealing with that mathematically. You might have to understand something about that conceptually, but you're only ever, with calculations, gonna be dealing with constant acceleration. So, in this case, I like this first equation a lot. It's my favorite equation when dealing with constant acceleration because it looks so similar to what we had here. So, but it essentially just says, if you can find the average velocity, and notice to find the average, you need both the initial and final velocities. You just add them together and divide by two. So if you have that initial and final velocity, you can use that average velocity and have a very similar equation to what we used when there's no acceleration. Cool. I usually try that one first, and if I don't have what I need, I move on to this one, my second favorite. So in this case, displacement equals initial velocities times time plus one half at squared. And so in this case, if you notice this equation here, the first part of it looks remarkably similar. So it's what we do with no acceleration, just using the initial velocity. So however, the second term takes into account that that velocity is changing. So and whether we're speeding up or slowing down, but it takes into account that we have an acceleration. Since it's changing, we might have a larger or smaller displacement, depending if we're going faster or slower, speeding up or slowing down. So this third equation is my least favorite. It deals with squares. So it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you're trying to do calculations in your head. Um, but in this case, what variable is conspicuously missing from this equation? Yeah, no time. Time is not a part of this equation at all. So if you're supposed to find you know, displacement, and you have nothing, no way of knowing the time, this is probably where you're headed. So finally, this last equation, I don't even like that you have this equation. This is simply just the rearrangement of the definition for acceleration. If you recall, acceleration equals delta V over delta T. If you subtract the V initial to the other side, you'd have VF minus V initial, that's delta V. Divide the T over, you get a delta V over T, and that's equal to acceleration, and yeah. I really want you to have an intuitive feel for the definition of acceleration. Again, why I'm having you, you know, give the units for acceleration as meters per second per second. So you can kind of get an intuitive feel of, oh yeah, so many seconds later, it's gonna be this much faster or slower, so on and so forth. But technically it is one of your standard kinematics equations, but if you understand the definition of of acceleration really well, you probably will intuitively be able to calculate uh, your final velocity from your initial or vice versa and things of this sort without even thinking about this equation. So let's look at some calculations here. If we look at number three, number three just says a, a car travels due north for four hours with a constant, what did I lost myself here, with a constant speed of 60 miles an hour. So I've given you a speed, but I've also told you that it's due north. Both magnitude and direction, that's a velocity, it's a vector here. So what is the total displacement here? So in this case, is there acceleration? No, because we're traveling at constant speed. If there's no acceleration, that's my only equation. And if I want that total displacement, I'll just plug in our velocity times our time, and you guys might be like, yeah, Chad, we did this in our head already, and I hope you did. Cool, 60 miles an hour, four hours, 240 miles. So what if I told you this car was traveling at 60 meters per second? I guess that's not gonna work so well, but for four hours. Well then, if it's 60 meters per second, what would you have to do differently here? You'd have to convert your hours to seconds, and it'd be a little more complex calculation, definitely using your calculator. Probably not one you're doing in your head. But in principle, the same thing. But notice, your units here from your velocity, the time part of it, have to match here so that they cancel. Cool, let's take a look at number four. Number four says a car uni uh, accelerates uniformly from rest with an acceleration of 10, 10 what? Meters per second per second, great. So in this case, uh, accelerates uniformly from rest. What does that imply? Yeah, from rest tells us that the initial velocity is zero. 
Cool, we've got a series of questions. The first question is, what is its velocity after six seconds? So if you notice, our initial velocity is zero. If our acceleration is 10 meters per second per second, how fast are we going after one second? 10 meters per second. How fast would we be going after two seconds? 20 meters per second. After six seconds, 60 meters per second. Perfect. So you've got it in your head. Notice we technically were using this equation, but you're probably doing it in your head without. That's intuitively what I want you to do. Here, the numbers are nice and it makes it easy. When the numbers aren't so nice, though, that's when you really got to have the, the intu intuition down or simply plug and chug. I will use the equation begrudgingly here. So in this case, our final velocity equals our initial velocity, zero, plus our acceleration, 10 meters per second per second times a time of six seconds, and indeed, we get a final velocity of 60 meters per second. Cool. Next part of that question, how far does it travel in the first second? So here we're wanting to calculate what? Displacement. And so in this case, we have acceleration? Yes, we do. These are what we're dealing with. So if we have no acceleration, but a much easier approach, we got one equation. So, but here's what we're dealing with. I usually, you know, you'll start to get an intuitive feel for which equation might be necessary in certain cases until you get there. I recommend you probably just start applying these in order. Try one, if you don't have the right variables, move to the next one and move your way down. I like starting here, that is my absolute favorite equation. So, and often there's more than one way to actually perform a calculation. So in this case, during that first second, Again, my favorite, delta x equals v average t. So at time zero, what's our velocity? Zero, we're starting from rest. After one second, what's our velocity? 10 meters per second. If we start at zero and we end at 10 meters per second, what's our average velocity for that one second period? Five meters per second. And we kept that up for one second and our displacement is five meters during that first second. Second question says, how far does it travel in the second second? Notice it's not saying how far does it travel in two seconds, but only during the second second, from t equals one second to t equals two seconds. You've got a couple of different approaches here. You could actually just figure out how far it travels in the two second span and then subtract off how far it traveled during the first second. And the difference would be how far it traveled in the second second or you can sit pretty much do exactly what we just did here as well. So in this case, delta x equals v average t. So at t equals one seconds, what's our velocity? 10 meters per second. At t equals two seconds, what's our velocity? 20 meters per second. And if we, t equals one 10 meters per second, t equals two 20 meters per second, what's the average during that period? 15 meters per second. And during that second second, it's in total a one second duration. And we'll find we've traveled 15 meters. So it makes sense that we've traveled further in the second second than we did during the first second. Yeah, because we're speeding up since we have a positive acceleration here. Finally, how far does it travel during the third second? We can do exactly the same process. So from during the third second, from t equals two seconds to t equals three seconds, we start at 20 meters per second. And after the third second, what's our velocity? 30 meters per second. And so what's the average of 20 and 30? 25. And again, the total time interval is one second. And we find that we've gone even further during that one second, 25 meters. questions here. Now technically we also could have used say this equation right here. So like during that first second the initial velocity was zero, that term goes away. We would have had just plus one half a t squared and so a was 10 and during the first second one squared, 10 times one squared is 10 times a half is five and we would have calculated five meters just the same. So however we would have had a much more difficult time calculating it for the second second. If we wanna use this equation, we pretty much would have to calculate delta x for a two second interval and for a one second interval and take the difference from there. So if we did this for two seconds, two squared is four times 10 is 40 times a half uh, is 20. And we'd have found that delta x for the first two seconds is 20 meters. Since delta x 
the displacement for the first second was five meters, we would have taken the difference and got 15 meters. So a little more of a pain in the butt. I love this equation. Cool, a couple things here. <clears throat> your displacement, your velocity, your acceleration. So they can all be positive or negative depending on direction. Oftentimes we use positive or negative to define the direction. Like displacement might be in the positive x direction or it might be in the negative x direction. So, and we can define uh, that direction part of it based on using plus and minus. Same thing with velocity, same thing with acceleration. One thing to note, if We'll start dealing with a lot of things going up and down, and by convention, we often define up as being positive. So if you have a displacement overall that's up, positive displacement. If your velocity overall, so if your velocity is pointing up, you're moving up, that's a positive velocity. And if you're accelerating in the up direction, then that's a positive acceleration. So however, down by convention is therefore negative, but if your acceleration, your velocity, and your displacement all point in the same direction, it really doesn't matter. Make them all positive, make them all negative. It is totally your call. So if you're likely to screw it up, then by all means, always make up positive and down negative. So however, when I do some of these calculations, if I know that my displacement, my velocity, my acceleration all point down, rather than making them all negative, I'll probably just end up making them all positive. Cool?